Welcome to another episode of Going Green. I'm your host, Kathleen Harvey, and today we're going to be talking about winterizing the garden. As you all know, we've had a killing frost here, so now that it's going to be cold for the next few months, there are some things that we should do to prepare to help our plants get through winter. So let's get started. As you can see, the results of the killing frost we've had has killed many of our plants back to the ground or nearly so. So the first thing we want to do is prune the plants, but not all the way back to the ground, but leave 8 to 12 inches from the top. So we take our handy pruners and we go down here and we prune some of the tips off and get the stems while leaving some of the plant. Pull all this out. This is actually a subtropical lantana which I'm trying to get to overwinter. These plants are a little bit tender in this area. They're not native to this area, but I'm trying to push the envelope of what might be able to grow in this area. So since these are commonly grown as annuals, I'm pruning it back and I'm going to try to protect it to see if I can get it to overwinter. Now that we've finished our pruning, I've gathered some leaves that I collected from my lawn, from the leaves that fell during the fall, and I'm going to walk with them back over here to the plant that we just pruned. And what I'm doing, I shredded these leaves. You can either use a leaf vacuum, you can take your mulching mower and mulch them that way, or if you have a lawn mower that collects leaves, uh, collects the grass as you mow your lawn, you can bag it and save that. So what I'm doing is taking my shredded leaves here and I'm going to place it around the base of my plants. So any tender plants that you have, you want to carefully use, and shredded leaves work much better than whole leaves. So I'm protecting the lantana that we just pruned. I also have a palm that I'm growing here. So I'm going to put some leaves around my palm. And the purpose of this is to provide extra insulation. It's like giving them a blanket. And this blanket will help to keep the temperature even so that the leaves and the roots, the roots especially, don't heave during the winter. Some days in the winter we have unusually warm days and then we'll have a cold snap. This constant, what we call roller coasting of temperatures, can cause plants to actually heave out of the ground from the constant thawing and then refreezing. So especially young tender plants, you want to provide a little extra protection for. So that's why I'm doing this. And then in the springtime, all you have to do is just come back and move the leaves around to uncover the piles. You only want to protect around the roots. You don't want to protect the whole bed because if you provide too much leaves or too much cover, you can encourage um, little creatures like voles, moles, and chipmunks to come and nest in that. And you don't want that because then they might eat the roots. So all you need is say four or five inches to immediately around the roots of the plant. And that will help to protect them and encourage them to survive the winter for you. And then next spring, because they're already shredded, they'll decompose partially over the winter and that the first signs of spring, the first sign of growth, then you simply come back and you use your hand and just brush them around. And they'll very rapidly decompose and help to feed your plants. For those of you who may have taken advantage of some fall clearance sales and had these wonderful grandiose plans of you bought these plants on clearance in the fall, you had you planned to get them in but things just didn't work out, life took over, what do you do with the plants to try to get them to survive the winter? Well here's a tip. Here are some plants that are meant to be outside. These are not house plants. These are outdoor bushes and perennial plants 
So what you do is you cluster them all together, as you see here, pot against pot, so that they actually help to insulate each other. If the roots are exposed to the air all winter long, the, the cold and the wind will likely dry them out and lessen their chances of survival. To enhance their chances of survival, you cluster them all together, pot against pot. It's like huddling to get people together for bodily warmth. And you can also cover these with leaves and then uncover them in the spring. Here we have a banana tree. As you can see, the cold winter winds have really browned a lot of it and I've chopped all the leaves back, but the trunk is still here. These banana trees are typically tropical. They don't naturally grow in this area, but I'm gonna to try to get it through winter. So in order to do that, what I've done is I've put a tomato cage around the tree. I've placed bags of leaves around it, again, to act as an insulating blanket. And then I've placed the shredded leaves again in the middle. I've filled the entire middle section with leaves. And it's the same purpose as the plants that we earlier discussed, but because this trunk is so thick and so tall, what I'm trying to do is encourage as much of this stem to survive as I can through dieback so that next spring, you'll see something coming back and hopefully it'll survive the winter. People also do this for fig trees. For those of you who like to have figs in the summertime, figs are wonderful. Um, shrubby trees that produce really good fruits but again they're marginally hardy in this area they're really a Mediterranean plant so if you like to grow figs it's also best to either wrap them in burlap and fill that with leaves or do something like this similar type of setup and lastly we take all of our prunings that we did earlier in the show plus the kitchen scraps that I've saved from my kitchen and we remember to add them to our compost pile. If you continue to feed and rotate your compost pile, then by spring, you'll have some wonderful soil amendments to add for your spring garden. I'm Kathleen Harvey. This concludes the, today's episode of Going Green. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time.